The leaked Pentagon documents raise serious questions about the security of America's top secrets. They also provide rare details into the U.S. intelligence gathering on our allies and our enemies. Now the U.S. is reaching out to allies to try to reassure them about our ability to control those secrets. Joining me now, Britain's Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt. He is the government's chief financial minister, basically their treasury secretary, and he's in Washington for the spring meetings of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. And it is very good to see you. Uh, Chancellor, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, Andrea. Well, as the Chancellor, a uh, top key member of the Prime Minister's cabinet, a former foreign secretary, I should might add, uh, from wh when we first met, how does this serious security breach, you deal with intelligence every day, how does that impact the trust that we have with our closest ally, of course, Great Britain, and other members of the Five Eyes? There's not going to be any impact at all. We, we understand that there are always risks when you're gathering intelligence that leaks can happen. Uh, we don't comment on leaks uh, as a matter of principle. Uh, but what I would say, as far as I can glean, uh, that we are certain that some of uh, the documents were doctored. So I think we have to be very careful about jumping to conclusions about any of the content of these documents. Uh, we know that uh, the United States is doing a very, very comprehensive investigation as to how the leak happened. Um, and they do everything they can to keep uh, conversations that need to be kept private, private. Uh, it's a very important part of keeping citizens here in the U.S. and in the U.K. and across the world safe, that we do gather intelligence so that our leaders can take decisions on the basis of uh, the best available facts. And uh, that will continue. Uh, I wanted to ask you about trade and our relationship and Europe's relationship with China. Uh, as well as the British relationship with China. France's President Macron, as you know, was in China last week meeting with President Xi. And he said on his way home that Europe must resist becoming a, a vassal, uh, America's vassal. He was referring to avoiding getting involved in a confrontation between China and the U.S. over Taiwan and wanting to preserve Europe's uh, options, trade options. Uh, what is your reaction to that? Well, we've, we've never been a vassal. We are independent countries, sovereign countries in Europe that make our own decision. But I think the lesson of history is very clear that the best way to defend democracy and freedom is when Europe and North America stand shoulder to shoulder. And uh, we share those values. Um, and it's very important that uh, when those values are under threat, as we're seeing in Ukraine, for example, uh, the strength of the Western response in Ukraine is one of the main reasons why Russia is losing this war. And that's one of the things that has been a very strong message amongst finance ministers at the International Monetary Fund in Washington this week. Um, and people who share the same values need to stick together. So I think um, that would be my comment. Uh, let's remember that uh, when people who don't share those values see division in our approach, uh, that's when they spy opportunity, and we don't want to let that happen. And as the war continues and perhaps approaches, you know, a war of attrition and stalemate, as was revealed in one of these leaked documents, is there a concern that the resolve in Europe uh, might weaken, especially because of Europe's desire for more trade with China, which is helping to prop up Russia and Putin in the war? There is uh, no sign whatsoever of any weakening of resolve, either in Europe or the United States or, or other allies like uh, Japan, Canada and Australia. And, um, you know, let's be very clear. Uh, we think that Ukraine is going to win this war. It is a matter of time. Uh, they will fight to the last man and we will stand with them. And we think that uh, they are in a much better place strategically than Russia to win this war. And uh, we recognize this is an existential threat to our values. It, it is not a regional problem. It is a global challenge to the values that we all share. And the UK and the United States were the two countries that did more than any other to set up the global order after the Second World War to protect freedom and democracy. Uh, and we are going to make sure we defend it. 
And finally, uh, President Biden, as you know, is just leaving Ireland and Northern Ireland after this extraordinary and very happy, uplifting visit from his perspective and certainly the Irish people, the welcome there was wonderful. Uh, he was, one of his diplomatic missions was to, of course, celebrate the Good Friday Accords, 25th anniversary, and the Windsor Agreements, which so important to any kind of bilateral trade agreement between the UK and the US. He made it very clear. Uh, are you confident that that can stand? and that these current recent tensions can be resolved? Well, I think that um, my Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, uh, did an extraordinary thing when he negotiated the Windsor framework. He uh, came to an agreement that resolves the border issues uh, that Northern Ireland has been facing since Brexit uh, in a way that works both for the people of Northern Ireland and for the European Union. And it has very, very strong support in Parliament. And it means that we can have a much better relationship with uh, the EU, which is important. I know important. I know it's been strong since Biden. All I'll say is that there is one bit of the jigsaw that now needs to fall into place, which is the resumption of power sharing uh, by the political parties in Northern Ireland. And we really welcome the fact that President Biden visited Northern Ireland to give that process a boost. And we hope that is the outcome.